Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is 4-3-2020. It is 2.48 p.m. Coronavirus is still happening. We might talk about that a little later on. It's impacting some of the things we're talking about. But right now, we got to start with something special. It's a name we haven't heard in quite some time. Randy. That's right, Mr. That's right, Mr. That's right, Mr. That's right, Mr. That's right, that's right, it's Mr. That's right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, my man's back, my man's back, my man's back, that's right, that's right. Oh, oh, could they hit that more than once? Randy, <laughs> our friend. <laughs> uh, ooh. So as the title says, despite huge sales, Borderlands 3 developers are getting stiffed on bonuses. Let's talk a little bit about how Gearbox works, because that's important before we get into this. Gearbox works, and has always done this, uh, where they pay people less than the average industry um, you know, uh, rate. But what they do is they give people some fat, uh, fat, fat bonuses, like super fat bonuses, like buy yourself a new house kind of bonuses. All right. So like crazy bonuses. And <clears throat> this is the way they've operated for quite some time. They've had some, you know, some successes with the Borderlands series, of course. They've also had some uh, uh, some less than stellar uh, successes. <laughs> for example, uh, uh, Aliens, for example, but the absolute just just bomb uh, where they end up not getting that big of a uh, of a bonus. And they were told initially that you know, they're going to get like six figure bonuses for Borderlands 3. And you may think, well, these people are bitching about getting six figure bonuses when I don't have a job. Don't forget that they're getting paid less than what they're supposed to be getting paid. And that's part of the deal. You get paid less in order to get paid more through profit sharing. Now, profit sharing is not a common thing that we find in most, you know, most of the video game industry because most of the profit it gets shared amongst the shareholders, <laughs> not so much with the people that that work, you know, th to make the game, and this puts this puts them in a uh, you know in, in a in a relatively positive light. Gearbox pays them more in bonuses than uh, than than what you'd get for working with uh, maybe EA or any other like big you know uh, game developer publisher. Um, <clears throat> is that related to is that related to what we're talking about? Our fears for ball? No, I don't think so. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. We got enough. Um, is it common practice to get shares as a developer though? I still have shares for several studios. Yes, you still get shares, but it's not. It's, you're not getting um, profit sharing in this respect. Where it's like if you release a game, it makes bazillion dollars. They take it 60-40 in this case. Sixty percent goes back towards, uh, uh, I guess, paying back the cost of you know making things. It goes to the company, and then of course the forty percent which is left is what gets split amongst everybody else. And you guys remember that, you know, Randy was in trouble for the uh, $12 million bonus that he took at the beginning of the Borderlands 3 development cycle. And he ended up getting, um, uh, they ended up finding out that he took it from the, the gearbox side, not necessarily the employee side. Remember the 60, 40 split, 60 gearbox, 40% to employees. So in that respect, it's like, okay, so he didn't necessarily take it from the employees. He ended up taking it from the company. I don't know if that's better or not, but you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> to be fair, that $15 million bonus was apparently out of the company side. Oh, there you go, Waylon. <laughs> so there you go, see, we're all on the same page here. <laughs> uh, and so they did say, they said, we expect lifetime unit sales to be record for this series. Talk about Borderlands 3, uh, but it costs way too much to make. One large factor was a technology swap from the Unreal Engine 3 to the Unreal Engine 4, which added a great deal of time to the project. And they did this right in the middle of, of development. And so you guys know the story when whenever you switch engines to mid, mid, mid development, it doesn't really work out. <laughs> like usually it ends up costing a lot of money, a lot of time. And you wonder like why, why they decided to make this decision so late in development. Um, and then furthermore, uh, let's see, before Gearbox could receive any royalties from 2K, uh, Borderlands 3 would have to recoup not just the game's entire budget, which is around $95 million, but also the budget for all the downloadable contents for some closer to $140 million, thanks to a contract that the two companies had signed. So because they said, <laughs> so because the higher ups uh, who 
would include Randy, who has already gotten his $12 million bonus, uh, had signed deals in order to you know recoup the cost of recoup the cost of uh, you know, upwards of 140 million dollars uh taking a massive chunk out of what could potentially be you know profit sharing monies and bonuses going towards people who actually worked on the game well now we're stuck with randy pitchford talking to uh to employees saying <clears throat> let me see do i have a quote here i uh, see pitchford also told Ge- told gearbox developers that if they weren't happy with the royalty system because he said that they're going to be it's going to be much less than what they should expect uh, they were welcome to quit. That was what was said with, uh, I think it was like six different sources actually confirmed that. Um, it's, uh, classy. Thank you. Thank you, JD. That's, it's, it's a classy thing for them to do. <laughs> uh, especially now. And, 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 and if you think about it, like, again, it's, it's hard to really wrap your head around here are some folks who are bitching about not getting a six-figure bonus, okay? But when you think about how you plan your life around these bonuses, knowing that when you're told this is going to be a six-figure, this is going to be a huge bonus, you guys are going to get paid, and you already know that getting paid equals buying a house, right? I mean, if you live somewhere where a house is like a hundred something thousand dollars, sure. Um, then you expect that that's going to be part of your payout when this is all done. And then when you're told it's probably going to be a fraction of that, we don't know what the number is yet because nobody has, I guess, gotten them yet. Um, but if it's in like tens of thousands instead of hundreds of thousands, and you've already kind of planned your life around these bumps because you get paid so little. And so you rely on those big spikes in order to continue living and continue supporting this developer you work for uh, and you get stiffed on it. That fucking sucks. Welcome to burn this mother down. The real question is, why do they keep letting Randy talk? Boy, that's a good question. Uh, History screens wait until the check clears and quit. Yeah, I, I almost wonder. Like, if I was working, if I was working here, like, I almost feel like I would just stop working. Like, I would. Ju- I don't. I don't know what their situation is, by the way. In terms of, does that covered in the article? I'm actually not sure if that part is covered in the article in terms of what they're doing in terms of the coronavirus, which, by the way, has nothing to do with what's happening here. Like, there's nothing. Nothing in here states where that that the coronavirus is taken any kind of uh, uh, a toll on sales or anything like that. If anything, it's probably actually it, it actually increased sales overall. Um, <clears throat> they're not going to have enough uh, t- toilet paper after Randy shits on you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I do not plan to spend beyond what you're guaranteed to get. Seriously, uh, I've been dealing with this for, with, with unemployment and stuff. This goes to show that loyalty to a company is rewarded with a company not caring about you. That's, that's yeah, that is, it's funny because we, you know, that, that phrase is not new, you know? Like that, that phrase is not new at all. Show loyalty to the company. The company will show loyalty to you. No, 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 it doesn't. Like we know that doesn't happen, but we continue doing it because I feel like some folks are kind of in, are in a position where they feel like that's just the way that, that things work. I mean, you know, when was Gearbox started actually? Uh, I would say, um, you know, what, almost like 20 years or something like that. I wonder if they have that in here. Uh, I actually, so I don't know exactly when it started, but, but it has been, they have been doing business like that since the beginning. So for them, they're just kind of going as business as usual. This is how we do things. Uh, and so I'd imagine that if you're there for that period of time and they use this as a recruiting tool, they're like, Hey, you know, we only pay this much. You know, you really get paid $150,000 a year, but we're only going to pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year because you're going to get a $350,000 bonus every time we release a game. Yeah, sure. We only release a game every three years or so, but still, yeah, that's that's potential for a lot of money. There you go. So it's February sixteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Um, no way they don't already. Uh, they, they didn't know that this is already going to be a problem. Oh, oh, hold on. <sighs> I'm lost in my lost, lost chat here. Uh, like how much bigger would Borderlands three have to be been for staff to get what's promised? Yeah, exactly. Like when you talk about, you know, I don't know how many people are 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 going to be receiving these bonuses. Okay. But when you talk about, let's say, 100 people, which I think is a very low number, personally, uh, if 100 people are going to lose the, the, uh, lose money in the amount of, let's say, $100,000 off their bonus, you know, for this for this cycle, uh, that's that's such a large number uh, in terms of like your margin of error to not know that that was potentially going to happen, you know, and 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 I'm assuming that that Gearbox is paying bonuses out to way more than 100 people um and so i would expect that those numbers that fluctuation in order to be down even fifty thousand dollars on your bonus uh would be something that they would be able to calculate and project so to me this is this is a case yes of gearbox and randy uh just not either not taking into consideration at all 
what the end product was going to be in terms of bonuses uh, and just going about signing deals and doing all this and promising the developer uh, publishers this and all this other shit. And then making all these like, you know, very expensive, you know, shifts in whether it's, you know, the, the DLC or changing engines right in the middle of developments. Like there is, there's so much here that I feel like they could have looked at and said, okay, if we do this, we're going to fuck our employees. So maybe they should know, or maybe we should talk to them or maybe we should, whatever. Uh, or maybe we would have known. So to me, it feels like they knew. They, they, they knew. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, th there's so much margin of, error, margin of error here. Like, just basic, basic, common core math <laughs> will, will tell you that ahead of time, they had to have known that the checks, that the, the bonuses were going to be slim. And then here we are in the middle of, of a pandemic where people are not able to find work. And I'm sure there's probably lots of these developers who are... You know, maybe their significant other is not able to work anymore because of this thing and they're stuck at home and they're being told, oh, hey, you know what? By the way, God, we forgot to tell you. Oh, shit. We were supposed to tell you this like two years ago. But your guys' checks are going to be fucking really, really thin. And yeah, they might be made of rubber. I don't know. I heard someone say that the reason why the bonuses were so small was because Randy paid for all the costs of the game and the DLC before pay out the bonuses. I hear, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. That's a one hundred forty million dollar bonus the thing that we were talking about. Um What's stopping Randy from taking a pay cut to pay pay cut to to pay his employees? Magic. Uh, <laughs> they had to know. Yeah, they had to know. There's no reason why they did not know. This was not a surprise. This didn't just come out of nowhere and say and it just, just. Oh my god, we don't have money to pay bonuses. They just weren't. They either just weren't considering their employees, which tells you a lot, or they were just saying fuck the employees, fuck them kids, basically. Man. It's a way to abuse employees because I know, uh, employees I know because I worked the same way where it was 50% guaranteed, 50% bonus, 50 bonus and boss abuse the shit out of it because of money. Oh yeah. The underestimated sales. Yeah. I say over overestimated sales, but you, even, even like they, they still say that they even said we expect lifetime unit sales to be a record for the series. So they do expect sales to be a record for that i man, i actually i wonder if they're gonna say i say oh man we, we shouldn't launch on epic maybe that, <laughs> maybe that was the problem but no it wasn't uh and randy would easily take the hit and his employees would be fine but randy doesn't care well i, I don't know how many employees like i said i don't know how many employees they have uh this is this is the um uh the bloomberg math scandal that happened not too long ago where somebody said well if, uh, uh, Bloom i would say somebody it was actual journalists who said this that if bloomberg took his uh, net worth, which also I don't understand why people like fall on that number, uh, and divide it up amongst every American, everyone would get a million dollars, which is so absurd, so absurd. Um, and the same thing applies for, you know, something like Randy. I don't know how much cash Randy has on hand, right? I don't know how much money he makes, but I don't think that if he were to take a pay cut, he would be able to pay everybody below him, um, what their bonuses were. But it's also kind of hard too, like, uh, it's kind of tough. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's like, it could, because it, he did take $12 million at the beginning of this whole thing. And, mm, uh, does any company not expect their next game to be the next thing? Well, especially with Borderlands three, like that game was, was despite everything that Randy was doing, it was still, cause it was all this negative press around Randy, tons of negative press around Randy. Despite all that, like they, it, it still did fantastic. There's still hype everywhere. Uh, I would guarantee that Randy would not be any worse off for taking that pay cut. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, I just don't think Randy cares. I honestly don't think Randy cares. I, I don't think he gives a shit about his employees. Um, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't. Matter of fact, let's go check his Twitter. I'm curious. Uh, what was it? Magic Duvall or something like that? Magic Duvall. Let me see. God, I can't. I have no idea what it's called. Randy Pitchford Twitter. That's what I'll do. Oh, Duval Magic. Damn it, I had it backwards. Let me see. Has he said anything today? Uh, April 2nd, what's he talking about? These are some sick jokes that kids enjoy. Disgusting. Oh, okay, so he's talking about that. Is this the right guy? That's him, right? Oh, yeah, that's him. Let me see. He retweeted something. Yes. Oh, he retweeted a thing for an anniversary. Okay, so you could get a uh, Nintendo Switch Lite. Cool. Maybe maybe one of his employees will get lucky and get a Nintendo Switch Lite out of the deal. Um, let me see. Trials take all. Okay, Borderlands 3 stuff. Let's see, got some weapon buffs. Mm hmm. Four years ago today, a national video game museum opened its doors for the first time. Okay. 
Rogan's a Define Me, Borderlands Crisis. Uh, yeah, he, he's not, he's not going to acknowledge, like, this article. Like, yeah, he's not going to acknowledge it. I'm so excited about this. Homeworld. I'm glad he's excited about that. Yeah, of course he's not going to acknowledge this kind of scandal on Twitter. Of course. I don't know why I'm looking there. I don't know why I'm looking. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> why, 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 why would he do that? He doesn't care. <laughs> Randy's proof that there is no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah, and they're going to go public, too. Like, they talked about it. They, don't, they didn't say when or anything, but they said they're in talks about, about going public. It actually, it's at the bottom of this Kotaku article here. Uh, it says, Gear, Gearbox, which is privately owned, has been seeking to go public, according to two people familiar with the company's plans. It remains to be seen how this news will impact that. It won't. <laughs> because clearly we don't care about, I mean, Randy gets away with so much shit and nobody says anything. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to make a difference, man. Uh of course not. If he does, he's either, uh, either the reaction he has will get him murdered online. The internet hates him already. Why would he need to respond? Exactly. Yeah. No, he's not going to respond because he has responded to stuff like this before. Remember, remember, I, I think I even said myself, uh, I was like, somebody needs to get Randy off of Twitter because he has a very bad habit of, or he had a very bad habit of replying to things. And so now he's not. And so, well, he, he did exactly what we expected him to do. Just, just ignore things and just don't respond to things on Twitter. I'm certain that probably his responses, his, his replies are probably, it's probably somebody in there saying something. Uh, someone took away his keyboard, yeah. <laughs> the top thing that comes up. How about those bonuses, Randy? The Verge and Randy Pitchford denied bonuses to his underpaid employees, assaulted the VA for his flagship series mascot, keeps Duke Nukem rights under the dark wet cellar, keeps company secrets in the same place as his porn, forces devs to keep putting his creepy self-insert into, into Borderlands. The Chad Dave Oshry. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Oh, man. Once again, Randy Pitchford has been proven to be an absolute asshole. Remember that epic exclusive deal with Borderlands? So guess guess where that money went? It's, uh, yeah. Seems like everyone that attacked me for saying fuck Gearbox and their employees should redirect that energy towards Duval Magic for taking a $16 million bonus in 2016. I said I said $12 million, which I thought was the correct number, but I guess you know. Uh, yes, the meme template that keeps, getting, keeps on giving... <laughs> Fucking Chad meme. Uh, and then cutting employees' bonuses and paying them less than industry standard. Good job. Hey, you guys, 10 golden keys expires by April 12th. I love the order it puts this thing in. <laughs> well, thanks, Randy. I'm so excited. I want to be in space. Some people would like to see you in space. Uh, <laughs> looking at the replies of your tweets. <laughs> yeah, play, pay your uh, your uh, employees their bonuses. Why don't you play your, pay your employees? Pay your employees. Pay your employees. Bruh, pay your employees. If you go, please stay there. See? Man. Yeah, so it's smart that somebody took away his keyboard and is not allowing him to post on Twitter because... There is no winning this outside of paying your employees. Randy, pay your fucking employees. God damn it. <sighs> Man. I mean, you want to stop this guy getting money? Stop buying Gearbox games. I, 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 you know, it's, it's a pickle. It's a pickle because and yet at the root of this, there's a whole lot of developers who are very hardworking and very talented. And, you know, you think, let me buy this game because I'm supporting those developers. And then it turns out you're not. It turns out you're not. It turns out that even though you thought you were supporting the developers by buying the game and not supporting Randy, well, they're withholding that money from the employees. So, or they don't have the money to pay the employees, the money that you paid in order to support the developers. No, nope. but Randy's good. Randy's totally good. He's going to help you guys. He's going to help you win that uh, the Animal Crossing Switch. Just retweet this thing. 400,000 retweets. Uh, Randy already did say something, so he would have responded that they can always quit. That's right. He did say it private that uh, if they don't like it, they are welcome to quit. But I uh, either said that done because in no reality, people will stop buying games. I'm genuinely shocked that he's not tried. Uh, dude doesn't seem to have a lot of self-control. Yeah, he does not really. Uh, you don't support Dazzle buying the games because they'll get theirs first. And that's that's the thing that we I think that's what we learned from this from this article with Gearbox, and given everything that Gearbox has done, um, Gearbox slash Randy Pitchford, is that even if you want to support the devs, somebody will stop you from doing that. Somebody will stop you. Somebody will find a way to take that money that you meant, that you, that you meant to go to the devs, and they'll make it theirs. Their own, not the devs. And so that's, that's there you go. So save your money. Don't buy Borderlands 3. Don't buy anything that Gearbox puts out.
I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, unless we see some kind of magic change or something, like if they go public, where all of their all of their earnings, everything has to be public. In which case, maybe we we'll get more transparency. But we have transparency into so many other companies; it doesn't mean anything. We know how much money Bobby Kotick makes. We know how much money everybody on EA board makes. We know how much because they're public. We could go to a website and pull it up right now. <laughs> it doesn't mean shit. It's like Bobby Kotick makes two hundred fifty million dollars a year. I don't know the number. That's not the number. But uh, but still, it's like. What are we going to do? Stop, stop buying his games? No, people still buy the shit. Uh, on one hand, they won't get another job if no one plays their games. On the other hand, they get replaced if their content is good enough for EA to buy out. Uh, part of the reason I don't give the money to War Thunder at all, I want to specifically for the artists because the models are amazing, but I bet the artists would get less than 1% of the money. It's tough, man. Yeah, supporting the devs doesn't help the problem. Yep. And that's something to remember. That's something because I've heard that so many times. So many times. Why are you mad at Epic? Why don't you support the devs? Because it doesn't work that way. As as proof. Case in point. Ah. Moving on. <laughs> man, let me let me tell you. Ra Randy was the sole motivator for me to get news going today, man. <laughs> I was like, fuck today. Fuck this week. Except for Animal Crossing. Fuck everything. Fuck every day is a goddamn same. But today we have Randy. Uh, as of 2019, search results featured snippet from the web. Why? What is this? Uh... Features. What is that? What is that tour? Who's who's uh who's how, whose hourly earnings are those? <laughs> it's one area where digital extremes treat their people like yeah, digital extremes. Yeah, we that we don't have. Oh, that's codex salary. I was close. I was off by a comma. I was off by a by a digit. Oh my god. Uh, my your Final Fantasy VII remake ship. So this has been a good week. Hey, that's great. I wait. Oh god. I guess I gotta put an order for that, huh? Uh, I do plan on playing that. And checking it out. I I don't I played the first one fucking briefly. I don't think I completed it. And it was like back when the game released. So yeah, I, I should definitely I definitely want to get in and check it out now. Um an interesting thing happened that kind of went under the radar a little bit with uh do digital download PS store. That's what I'll probably do. Um I'm such a physical whore, but right now I don't want to touch anything physical. <laughs> so Square Enix, speaking of Final Fantasy VII, what a great segue. Thank you so much, Waylander. Speaking of Final Fantasy VII, if you went to a store and bought it early, because some stores are selling it early, if you went to a store and purchased that game early and then decided you were going to go home and stream it, you went to a store and bought it early. The same way you go to the store and you buy toilet paper to wipe your ass with. You don't think about maybe I should hold on to that toilet paper. It's a bad analogy <laughs> for <laughs> for any period of time before you're allowed to wipe your ass with it. You don't think about that, right? Well, in Square Enix's uh, uh, case, <laughs> wait, you guys could buy toilet paper? <laughs> I could think of that fucking meme. Uh, so in this gentleman's case, uh, excessive profanity, what a great name. Uh, it says, looks like I just got auto DMCA by Square Enix. Apparently they're allowed to tell retailers to sell it. I'm allowed to go to a store and buy it. And without any official communication, they're allowed to have my Twitch channel suspended for streaming it. Nice dudes. And for those of you guys who do, did follow this, before you say anything, before you say anything, there's a lot of people responding, say it says clearly right here in their uh, in their official. All right, let me actually pull up. Let me pull up the actual page here, uh, which is right here. Uh, it says right here. <clears throat> we've got such small type. Let me zoom in. It says blah 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 material usage da 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 blah blah. These terms apply to et cetera et cetera. And then it says any distribution, posting, or or, or other use of the works by you constitutes your agreement to these terms. Users are not authorized to publicly post content before 10 April 2020. So that's why you're supposed to read these, these streaming guidelines before you, when you buy a game, you got to read the streaming guidelines first, even if you bought the game already. Okay. So we, a uh, big deal. Yeah, that's, that's the big deal. He, so he, he streamed the game and then he got banned. It, it, and we'll get to that part in a second. Um, because no, who reads legal documents? Well, here's the thing. Let's assume that he did read the legal documents for this. And he did, which he says he did. 
it was not there when he first, and this is, I've, admittedly, it's very difficult to read here. I wonder if I could pull this up to another window here and get a zoom here. Uh, it was not there initially. Over here on the right, you see it says, users are not authorized to publicly post content before 10 April 2020. And over here, you can see that that is missing. So, for him, he, his ass was covered. Because at the time, it didn't say that he couldn't stream the game. Uh, and they updated it after they announced they were shipping it earlier than expected. Uh, and so he ended up getting his channel banned. Uh, people were, and, and it's not so much Final Fantasy's fault. Maybe they were late to getting, or the Squeenix's fault, because maybe they were late to getting the, co the code, or the code, the, uh, the copy done or something. Uh, but at the same time, maybe they shouldn't have just like jumped right on it. It's auto DMCA. Uh, it's kind of tough. Um, they did put up, but, but what I, the reason why I want to show you guys is because he was getting shredded. People were just like, dude, it says right here, don't stream it. What the fuck? Like, can't you read? And he was getting just shredded on Twitter because when he played it, it didn't say that. And then they added it <laughs> without saying, hey, we added it. We, we made an we, uh, adjustment here. Uh, and it, yeah, it ended up being retroactively enforced. Uh, pray, pray we don't alter the agreement any further. Yeah, if you're playing a game pre-street date, you know the risk, uh, no matter what it says. I mean, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, Serene. Like, I, I feel like if you buy a game from a store and you go and, and it, it, that's your, you didn't sign an NDA, right? You didn't sign an, any kind of non-disclosure agreements. You're not gonna stream it. You're not gonna do all this stuff. You didn't sign an NDA. You just, you just bought the game. Uh, the only thing that exists, and even people are, are, are actually hitting up and saying, why did, didn't you read the Twitter feed? I don't fucking check the Twitter feed when I buy a game. <laughs> if I buy a game, I'm not going to go and be like, hey, let me go check the Twitter feed to see if I can stream this game. Uh, you bought the game. And so it says here, it says Final Fantasy Remake teams worked hard, blah, blah, blah. And it says that as a result, there's a greater chance that some of you are in, in these regions will now get a copy of the game prior to world, world, world wide, no, worldwide release a day on April uh, 10th. And so it goes on to say that we ask you uh, to everyone, we would like to ask you one big favor. And it says, if you get the game early, please don't. Uh, please, it says, please think of others and don't spoil it for them. We know there are potential spoilers that have been out there for over two decades as the original Final Fantasy VII was released in 1997. But Final Fantasy VII Remake is a new game that still has many surprises for everyone. And so it says, please don't spoil the game. It doesn't say, do not stream this game. <laughs> it doesn't say that. So the communication on Final Fantasy VII's part was pretty... Uh, uh, it was pretty bad and but 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 there is a happy ending there is a happy ending uh he did actually get his channel reinstated uh what was it what is it on um, one day 52 minutes and 45 seconds later so it was a 24 hour ban that he got uh, for it so it wasn't necessarily a reinstatement because of you know because of Squeenix or whatever, but it, uh, <laughs> but it was a 24 hour ban. The risk was always there. A company can always stop you streaming if it's not covered under fair use. So the DMCA is legal. Oh, no, no. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that there is plenty of, you know, I mean, right now you could argue that every game that you stream is streamed illegally. Just nobody really enforces it. Right. Uh, unless, unless it says otherwise you're streaming it illegally, right? Fair use, blah, blah, blah. And then whoever has the biggest bank account is going to take that one. Um, and so in this case, I mean, yeah, yeah, people say the fact that you got streams is, is BS. Uh, let me see. Also, I don't think the stores were supposed to sell early. No, 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 no. They, they, no, they did sell it. Uh, they did. Let me actually go back and read the, the article here. Let me see. Uh, we had some hard decisions to make in the final few weeks before launch due to the disruption of the, disruption, uh, of the distribution channels caused by the spread of COVID-19 virus. These unique circumstances have made it very difficult to align timing of our global shipping. Our last priority is that all of you, including those who live in countries that currently face the biggest disruption, can't play the game at launch. So we made the decision to ship the game far earlier than usual to Europe and Australia. So they're saying that they gave them to the stores in order to allow them to sell them early because of all this is happening. What My point that I'm trying to make, and I can see that already, there's, like, I see that you know not all of us agree on this, but... The, the thing that I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that they, they auto DMCA'd somebody, um, which is obviously within the right to do that. Uh, they later added the, you cannot stream this thing. Okay. Uh, and there was no note saying that we've made it a change to our terms or whatever. They don't legally have to do that. They could just change it and just pray that you don't alter, alter, alter the deal anymore. And this poor fucking guy just got his shit kicked in because Everybody was too dumb to go check webcast to see that they had, in fact, 
changed it. They decided just to be little fucking know-it-alls and read the first goddamn sentence and then come back and shit on this poor fucking dude. Uh, and so they turned it into just a whole fucking mess. Um, the USC is a good fair use case to the Supreme Court to kill someone's bullshit DMCA shit. Be careful, Larenzide. You you may get more than you bargained for <laughs> in doing that. You, you really have to be careful with that because you end up losing. A lot of folks could lose their uh, their well being. Uh, you know, doing you know, putting commentary does not magically make it fair use. And let's hope that we don't have to go to court and figure out if that's the case because then you're gonna have a bunch of fucking boomers who are gonna be like, yeah, that's what's a, what's a, my grandson plays Fortnite. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, I can't speak of video games, but I know for a fact the movie theater I used to work at would have to be sh would have been shut down if they showed specific movies before the official re release date. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, but theaters have deals with, with people. Like, this is like the patron getting in trouble, okay? Like, if you went to a movie theater and you saw a movie before it was supposed to be released... That's like you getting in trouble for watching that movie. That's what this is like, because there's already a deal with, like, the, the movie theater is the distributor of where they bought this game, the GameStop or whatever, uh, where he bought the game. That's the movie theater, and but, but he's the one that ends up getting in trouble for it. And so, and the court doesn't understand technology in any way, exactly. Please don't, please don't bring any kind of DMCA shit re related to video games of fair use to the Supreme Court. Like, we are fucked if that happens. Uh... It's kind of like him walking out and blabbing about it or recording it. it it's, it, I, 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 could, I could see this is going to be very difficult because we're all going to try to come up with analogies that really work. And really, I don't know if there's anything that does. Streaming is such a unique thing. It's such a unique thing. Um, that streamer makes money off of that game, so he's not just a patron. He's also a content creator. Well, ditching the DMCA via Congress is never going to happen. Uh, I don't know. This is a case where I side in the middle. I can't take either side here. It's both is right is wrong. If you get beaten up by a... Bald guy, what? <laughs> I like the name though. All right, let me see. Da, 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 da. Can we move on? Do we want to keep? Do we want to keep going circles about this one? <laughs> I think we're good. Thank you. Mentally challenged. Uh, <laughs> um, let me see. And other news, not necessarily related to the PlayStation Four, but Xbox. The long-running official Xbox magazine shuts down. This is one of those, like, it's a magazine, nobody shocked kind of thing. And I, I get it. Like, Playboy, I think, is done, right? I think that there's a lot, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, magazines that are not going to survive this, this, whole, this whole coronavirus thing because it's a physical product. Uh... Let's let's do news about how a news place is shutting down. <laughs> Seems legit. That's where we're at right now. Um, yeah, the magazine. So so uh, official Xbox magazine, which has been around for a very long time, about as long as Xbox. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. Uh, they lasted longer than Game Informer. Yeah, so they're shutting down officially. The uh, the upper management is actually taking pay cuts to, in order to actually so right there future bosses they say they've taken uh, pay cuts to reduce layoffs so that's that's kind of a nice thing um it is still on their site like if you go to games radar here you'll see an ad unless it's been removed already but here we go get more get more great writing so this is an article that was taken from the uh from uh, an issue of xbox magazine and it says uh get more great writing from an official from official xbox magazine and it says this. Uh, it says you can subscribe now for as little as nine dollars for three digital issues. So if you click on it, it basically goes nowhere. You get redirected because it does not exist anymore. So they've already removed it from the even the digital uh, print stands. So Playboy can live depends on who will buy the license. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I think in general that obviously we're going to lose any kind of print based uh, uh, magazine that hasn't you know figured out a way to monetize online. Like think like Washington Post, New York Post, stuff like that. Um, they're the ones that have figured out how to do this, uh, how to come, how to how to basically transition from print to online, and they've done it successfully. I think I don't know. I don't know what their, their finances are, but uh, I know that right now they're getting a shitload of traffic with uh, the coronavirus and all that. Um, and Playboy has been re <laughs> replaced by OnlyFans. Man management taking pay cut. That's right. Randy, look, look. That's what you're supposed to do. At least, at least as an act of good faith, right? 
Like at least as an act of just goodwill. It's like, oh, you know, I'll take it. Even though a pay cut for me would not really amount to any more than $1,000 for every single employee, at least something. You know, at least something. Fucking weird. Maybe, maybe, maybe next news we'll have some good news and Randy will like turn around and be like, hey, I'm going to try to hook my, my people up. But that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Uh, speaking of Xbox, though, a couple of small articles here for you guys. <gasps> did you guys have this? Did any of you guys use Xbox Online for anything? Uh, so they, they had a Xbox Live, sorry. Uh, they have so much traffic. 775% increase in traffic, which I think we've seen uh, across Twitch with streamers like myself who have had just random dropouts of internet that was previously very stable because I guess everybody's home watching fucking t Joe Tiger, <laughs> Joe Exotic, Tiger King. <sighs> uh, and no, no, there's no bandwidth left for everybody else, uh, but they actually had to make some pretty interesting changes to uh, <laughs> keep a straight face. Uh, They've had to make some changes, some interesting changes where they had to, it says right here, so they had to disable gamer picks and a game updates only off peak hours. So there's a strat, this but a strain on so many services. Even I even saw this morning actually, I guess the Blizzard launcher, the Battle.net launcher had a had a queue to get in or something, something crazy. Like we're seeing queues in places where we where, where we don't normally see them. Like it's just it's just because so many people are at home. And it's no longer like, oh yeah, between five and, and nine is like your peak hours. Now it's like all day is peak hours because everybody's home all day. Everybody who's working from home or unemployed or whatever, they just have Netflix on all day. Uh, Comcast has been slow as hell. Yeah, it went from 6 megabits uh, download to 200 due to congestion. That's crazy. Yeah, Monday night, my, my internet upload was dead. Just done. Um, internet is not even consistent at all anymore. Yeah, some super bad lag in game as well as the server pop in WoW. On oh, WoW, it's just lag everywhere. Also, downloads are affected on the Battle.net app. Oh, really? Are they? The power in the uh, in my city dropped yesterday due to the load. Damn. Jesus. That's crazy. There's just, there's so much usage that's happening that just, just just did not exist before. It was not necessarily anything that was planned. Although I do wonder, like, if 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 Every day, all day is peak hours for like electricity. Am I getting charged peak usage 24 seven now? I'm sure I am because PG and E. I was in the ISP industry for years. They all do it and it's bad. What is this the uh, throttling or which? Uh, it, this very stream is buffering for me every once in a while. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not dropping any frames. So today we're good for my end. Thank, thankfully, uh, knock on with everything over subscription. Oh yeah. Uh, I'll pull in 230 at the moment out of my normal 350 and watch watch this 1080p 60 and there are like three other streams going on in the house. Oh, well, good. Well, why don't you go ahead and brag about your awesome internet, Larenz? <laughs> oh, you're able to watch more than one stream at one time? <laughs> I go to old Pornhub. I have two Pornhub windows open. I open a third and just, everything just dies. Man, tragedy, tragedy. Waves dick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Back on the PlayStation site. Wow, we do a lot of console news. I wonder why. Is it because everybody's home playing video games right now? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, they assume that not everyone will be on it at a time and get get in, get in shit when they are. Uh, we have a single line, one gigabit Ethernet here, but it's expensive. Jeez. Even in 4K? No, I don't do the 4K stuff. I don't want to see all that. I don't want to see all that. I don't want to... Uh, I don't need to see, like, 9 a.m. shadow in places where it shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> You're ruining my immersion, man. Uh, so back on the PlayStation side, PlayStation employees working from home until 30th of April will receive full pay and equipment budget. Uh, they will be working at home for much longer than the 30th of April, just so you guys know. Um, did I say 9 a.m. shadow? <laughs> I think I meant 9 p.m. shadow, 5 p.m. shadow. Uh, you know, the shadow. Um, so they actually, so, so PlayStation employees are getting uh, a segment of, I think, $1,000 to pay for equipment. So basically, work from home, get full pay, and here's $1,000 to get you set up for whatever it is that you need at home in order to make, in order to make it, uh, you know, a, a workable area. Um, this is fucking awesome. Like, this is good news. This is great news. Uh, that, here's, <laughs> this is, this is what? This is good stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's five o'clock shadow. That's what it is. I get not 5 a.m. 5 p.m. I guess it depends. Um, PlayStation's due is right by its employees of both Europe and North America. They're doing this. Find out who's buying up all the monitors on Amazon. Yes, all the, yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah, hear that, Randy? That's right, Randy. Randy. My Randy button's on the other menu over here, but just trust me. Um, that's a kick-ass deal. I had to fight with my wife's company to compass for $500 for monitors for her work. Which I could do work from home. My job is literally dead until everything's over. That sucks. Yeah, not everybody's obviously gonna be able to just to work from home. Um, I can tell you Blizzard expo employees can expense desks and internet. That's awesome. That's really great. You know, and, and you know, like this, this, any company who is willing to compensate for office utilities, usage, whatever in a home environment because of all this is seriously going above and beyond. Uh, because don't forget, they're still paying the lease on that building. It's not like, you know, these uh, real, real uh, um, uh, commercial real estate is just going to like stop accepting rent. So they're still paying their lease. They're still paying for the internet to go where nobody's working. And on top of that, they're going to pay for, you know, all of this, uh, all, all of these people, their, their expenses for working at home. So a company like Sony doing this for their folks and Blizzard doing something for their folks, um, it shouldn't be above. I think it is. Uh, I, 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 I know it's, it shouldn't be above. I get what you're okay, Maybe I get what you're saying. It shouldn't be above and beyond. Uh, but they also didn't have to do this because they are already losing money because of having to still pay for utilities, everything at work. Uh, I think there's some moratoriums on mortgages in some states. Yeah, some states have some freezes on certain things, but it's not consistent. Uh, right now, the United States is being run a whole lot like a whole bunch of small countries. Like, I'm serious. Like, it really is. If you're not familiar, like, the U.S. is seriously running things as if we are just a whole lot of independent countries right now. Um, and so everybody's got their own, like, every governor's got their own, you know, uh, uh, lockdown whether or not they're locked down or not, like what the rules are, uh, in terms of what they're supporting, and in, in terms of what they're, uh, they're they're all getting their their resources, their their protective equipment, you know, it, on their own. Uh, it's it's definitely we're seeing a whole lot less, you know, federal and a whole lot more state everywhere. Uh, they're competing with each other for medical supplies. What was the Patriots or something like that? Like a Patriots plane or something like that went to China to go get uh go get uh, supplies. Because we couldn't get it from our own government? It, that's what it's like right now. Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. Uh, but, I mean, going back to Sony. <laughs> uh, one thing about the work from home stuff that I'm sure many companies give no fucks about is any extra power usage you now have doing to running your company from your house. Yeah. Let me tell you, e even as somebody like myself, who who I use a fair amount of electricity here uh, doing doing the stream and everything, doing shows. Uh, with Jen here, that's... That's more electricity. With Declan here, that's more electricity. Just in usage. We're all in different areas of the house, so we're not all taking advantage of the same light. We wouldn't want that, right? So we couldn't all, like, bunch into the same room and just cool or heat this one room. You know, we, we kind of have our own spaces, uh, different corners of, of the place. And it's just, it's, it's going to be costly. I'm sure that this is going to be the highest electricity bill that we've probably seen in a long time. Um, and then, you know. Hopefully we could say that we offset that because we're not paying for transit or something, but, uh, you get local maker spaces making and donating med supplies for local medical places. Also like, uh, all the, uh, what was it? Like kink.com and all that, who they have all the medical fetishes and everything that they had their own, uh, uh, supplies that they're, they're putting in. Uh, let's get back to this though. Let's get back. Let's get back. Let's, let's, let's just turn, get back on there. Uh, and so there was something here that I thought was pretty interesting given how things have unfolded. Uh, it says the manufacturer admitted this week that it's carefully monitoring the risk of delays in production schedules for game software titles at both its first party studios and partner studios. The release schedule remains relatively unchanged at the time of typing, but we suspect it's only a matter of time before titles begin to move around. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. What was this supposed? Saturday at 2 p.m. So Saturday at 2 p.m. What day was that? Let me see. That was uh, mm, the 28th, 28th of March. Why don't I just put, don't, don't, don't put Saturday? 28th of March. Oh, you hover over there, right? There it is. 28th of March. They said that. On April 2nd, Last of Us 2 delayed indefinitely. Hose mad. <laughs> so the last of us two, uh, 
I have decided that they're here for yes, derail too far. Goes, burr, burr, burr. Wait, what? Oh no, I hope you're not I hope you're not just finding out about right now, Anti Frog. No, I'm sorry. Oh god, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to be the one to tell anybody. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, please tell me I'm not the one to do it. Oh man. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I should let you down. I should let you down softly. God, I just I just I just slapped it in there. Jesus Christ. Terrible. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so it says, uh, as you've likely seen, the release of Last of Us 2 has been delayed. We're sure this news is just as disappointing as it is to you as it is to us, right? Right? <laughs> What? Day ruins. Uh, the good news is we're nearly done with development. The Last of Us Two. We're in the midst of fixing our final bugs. However, even with us finishing the game, we are faced with the reality that due to logistics beyond our control, we couldn't launch the Last of Us Two to our satisfaction. We want to make sure everyone gets to play Last of Us Two around the same time, ensuring that we're doing everything possible to preserve the best experience for everyone. This meant delaying the game until such a time where we can solve these logistic issues. If only there was a way. God, if only, if only, God, how can we possibly get games to people if they can't go to the store and buy them? Oh my, what are we going to do? There's got to be a way. How do we do this? How do people play games if they can't go buy them in the fucking store? There has to be a way, dudes. <sighs> yeah, like delaying until next gen? Maybe. Time to call up Santa? Yeah, how about, how about Digital. How about that? How about that? Why not? Why? Not? Look at how mad. Well, a bad example with uh, with Doom and uh, and and. Uh, no, let's use Alex. Okay, Alex. That's a digital game. I don't believe you can you can even go to a store to find a box for that. Maybe you could somewhere, but coronavirus. Uh, that game is blowing up. Why? Why not just release digital? He says, sorry, I don't like digital. I, 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 and I understand. I'm not somebody who typically buys digital for consoles. Um, usually what I do is I buy a cartridge. For the Switch, anyways. Uh, and for the DS. Usually I buy, I, buy, I buy cartridges. I like having cartridges. It, make, it makes some things easier, right? And it makes other things a huge pain in the ass. What is this, the internet? What are we doing? Uh, and so I am somebody who definitely supports digital, or supports uh, physical copies, for sure. I have a whole box of, of indie games. Uh, all physical versions of indie games. And so I get it. I get that. But I feel like these are times when we need to suck it up and just not have a cardboard box that's going to sit on our shelf forever. And we're not, outside of opening it up and taking out the key... <laughs> Outside of taking out taking out the key to use, uh, and then putting it on the shelf, like yeah, it's it's. Eh. I got a four four gigabyte SD card for the Switch just so I can get digital. There you go. Sony can't do digital only because the PS4 was one E3, uh, was E3. Wait, I I I think I think we I I I I'm not reading that correctly. Um. Especially you buy, when you buy a collector's edition, I like the taste, that's funny. Uh, it's more for leading games to friends for me. Uh, because PSN download speeds are so slow, digital only is the same as indefinite delay. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, I mean, I'm a little bummed about this. I, I, first off, I, I only played the, oh, the intro to Last of Us, and I couldn't do it. I could, I, that's not a game for me. Uh, it's a little too... Uh, oh, for lending. Oh, for lending. Yeah, exactly. You let your friends borrow games. I know that's an old school thing, but still, uh, but yeah, it's, it's the intro is super brutal. It's really, br and I, I couldn't hang with it. And so it was a personal thing for me. I was like, you know what? I could see why people really love this game because they're not pulling any punches, punches on this. Uh, and so I kind of stepped away from it. So I understand that people are, are very upset about this. They're emotionally invested in this fucking game. Okay. <laughs> they're emotionally invested in this game. Uh, and so I could see why people are really upset about this. I just wish that they would just bite the bullet and just, just put it out on digital and just put it on digital and let people, or, and, and they can't even do like, you know, buy a physical release and then get digital because then what will happen is everybody will buy physical release to get the digital, like, you know, get a code. And then they'd still have to ship out the, the physical release whenever that happens. And so they have to, they'll end up selling more of that and then still have to pay for shipping and all that shit to get it to people. Um, I downloaded Grand Trace with 6 for my dad's PS3 a few years ago. Holy shit, took a whole day. Uh, so you're not, what are you talking about? I'm not invested at all. Uh, bad time for an epidemic uh, game to release, to be fair. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Resident Evil, Resident Evil 3 just, just came out. What Was that today? I don't even know. Era, era. What is that? Was that today? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess, I, I mean, you know, whatever, whatever they want, however they want to conduct business, I think it's fine. I just, I just, I feel bad overall for the people who are looking forward to that and then, you know, and then have it taken away. And I'm sorry that I had to be the one to, uh, to break the news, man. Whoops. Uh, I, I really didn't want to be that person for anybody. I thought, I thought everybody knew about this. Jeez, man, I, I'm afraid to go into the next story here. Although it'd be weird if you didn't know about this one and you were playing the game. So uh, there's a game called Last Oasis that you guys introduced me last week, and you try to get me, try to convince me to play. Uh, and not not that it's a negative thing or anything like that, but apparently they had some issues, and they said we are suspending Last Oasis servers for the next seven days. Full refunds will be offered regardless of your play time. This was on March 29th. They said that. Uh, is any is anybody in there going to be like? <laughs> What? I've been playing this whole time. Where is everybody? <laughs> Lost. So Last Oasis. Uh let's let's let me go ahead and I see how long is this video? Um it's relatively Hi, short. Chat here from Donkey Crew. I'm sure you noticed that our survey issues are still ongoing. Um many of you are currently not able to connect to Last Oasis. So we decided two things. First of all, we are going to take the servers off for se for roughly seven days. Uh, our coders have been working day and night uh, to resolve this issue and they need some sleep. We need to properly investigate why our load testing didn't pick this up and what went wrong and figure it out properly and solve it. And the other thing, well, a lot of you mentioned this is not how an early access game should launch and we fully agree. In his defense, that is exactly how an early access game should launch. That is not how a 1.0 game should launch. But an early access game, this is what you should expect. This is absolutely not how an early access game should launch. So we decided that everyone who is currently unhappy with the state of the game should get a full refund regardless of their in-game hours, no questions asked. Uh, so just head to Steam to do that. Uh, we also received some positive messages which are very... So I'll stop there because that's pretty much the gist of the, of the, of the uh, discussion there. This actually makes me want to buy the game. Like, per personally, this makes me want to buy the game because the fact that this guy, you know, the, or, you know, these folks are willing to offer full refunds, regardless of how much time you played into a game that they they're experiencing issues with, but they plan on bringing back like that is a lot of goodwill, man. That is that is such a positive thing. Uh, and it, yeah, it, this makes me want to buy the game. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best ad I've seen for this game right now. Um, you said it's a super interesting take on a on the survival genre. Take take notes, Randy. That's right. Where you at, Randy? Uh, that that sucks that the player base is so fucking toxic. You know, I, I, from what I heard, it's a PvP game, and I feel like that's something that is uh, kind of inherent to that, unfortunately. But um, take notes, Randy. That's gonna be the fuck. That's gonna be the goddamn title of this show. Just like that's gonna be the title of this show. Take notes, Randy. <laughs> I bought stuff purely because the creators showed how how much how, how little they cared about the the money. Yeah, not even gonna play. Yeah, I, that's true. I might not even play, it, but I but I feel like supporting these guys for sure. Like this is a uh, uh, this is such an act of goodwill for them to do, and they're taking such a risk on potentially losing so much money. Uh, they're willing to do this. So uh, the game that I, I I've only seen clips of the game. I know very little. Um, it's a title I'm holding. Yes, it is. I care more about the product and your consumer to shut up and take my money. That's right. Yeah. So when you see this kind, when you see this kind of goodwill and this kind of, um, you know, you're towards the consumer, like that makes you want to buy a game. Yeah. I I know for a fact I've bought. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I have purchased games before simply because I've liked the developer and how they treated consumers. Um. And yeah. Um. So it sucks if you were playing the game. It does suck, but you can, you do have an option to go through and uh, and get a refund if you want. Uh, if you're if you're if you're needing that money to spend on anything else, uh, then then go for it. But I wouldn't. I would just keep it. <laughs> I just hope that you know. What's the worst that can happen? Like, what if after a week? Because that week is is almost up. That was March 29th. You know that week is going to be up. You know this weekend. Uh, if they don't end up bringing it back, then you're still going to get a refund. So. Spend it on Resident Evil 3 instead. Jeez. Dang, era. Truth be told, I'm sure there's a lot of people who won't seek refunds because they're so honest and open. There you go. Feel the same. I mean, you are the reason I bought Oxygen Included, even though I've only played it only a few times and I suck at it. But like what, what Clay did with Oxygen Included and Don't Starve. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Now, now, I did say, I did say I wanted to, yeah, 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 you assume the date's going to be pushed back. It was a, was a big bug, a big, big bug. Oh, wow. Not just a big bug. Big, big bug. Um, well, I have plenty of other games to hold me over. <laughs> I play, I got Animal Crossing to hold me over. Uh, speaking of positive news, I mean, not, not, not the, obviously the last Oasis thing, that was, that was a, that was, that was not positive news. It was a positive spin on some negative news. But speaking of positive, in other news, we have some classic Nintendo games that are going to get remastered. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> trying to, trying to tr channel that Josh, the Josh Allen. It just doesn't work, man. <laughs> it doesn't work. Just call him up. Like, hey, give me a, give me, give me a transition real quick. <laughs> what are you dealing with? Well, I'm dealing with the last Oasis shutting down for a week. And then I got transitioned to uh, Nintendo uh, remastering some classics. How do we, how do <laughs> where, where do we get, where's the middle ground there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, you're gonna get. Uh, there's a couple games that they they mentioned. It says uh, Super Mario Sunshine 2007, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario 64. Which 64 I'm looking forward to. I played 64 on the N64 on a friend's N64, uh, not my own. Um, and I played Super Mario 64 also on the DS. If you guys didn't know, it's also available on the DS. Uh, Declan actually played on the DS, so actually he'll be looking. Um, uh, for that as well. Speaking of good companies, oh, there you go. Speaking of, by which I mean, by which I mean, <laughs> speaking, of, yeah, the by which I mean was the ultimate like transition, right? That was the ultimate like chain link because you could link this and this and this, and eventually you forget where you came from, and then you'll be like, wow, he he totally connected these two things, but I forgot where we started. <laughs> so this is great news. They were going to actually showcase this at E3, but E3 is kaput. So we're not going to get anything from E3. So we probably should expect more news directly from them some, somewhere around E3, which was what, like June, July, something like that? I don't even know anymore because what is today? Don't know. Um, they might pump some new life into the Mario speed running scene. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's actually a, that's actually a, uh, an interesting note, especially Mario 64. Mario 64 speed runs. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sure they're all very uh, you know interesting, uh, the entire series. But uh, uh, Mario 64 speed runs are, are, are great for me because... The transition to a 3D Mario, because I, I went, I went, you know, Mario, uh, you know, Mario NES, Mario SNES into Mario 64. And so getting that, that th camera moving transition for me was like jarring. And so seeing people that can just ace Mario 64 uh, in like no time at all, because they have mastered the camera to me, like that already is such a, like, the, 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 the bar is set so high. Hi, babe. Do I want to start? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, vodka something. Vodka surprised me. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting the drinks. Um, so yeah, we should expect some, some remasters. I'm actually curious what kind of remaster we're looking at because Super Mario 64, and just to take that one specifically, Super Mario 64 is such a visually iconic game like it's part of the trademark right it's 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 the it's the, the low poly look and all that like i feel like that is such an iconic look what is it going to look like i mean it, it i mean i've never doubted nintendo's aesthetic like if you look at the uh all of nintendo's games that they released on on switch and you look at their aesthetic especially especially with the uh, the um the the Legend of Zelda remake that they put out, uh, uh, uh Island Island. God damn it! What the fuck's the name of the game? Whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, if you look at that, the visuals on that, it's like that. That is stellar. And so I can see them, you know, taking this game and bringing it up to that to that level, uh, and giving us just the most beautiful Super Mario sixty four, Paper Mario, uh, Galaxy, Link's Awakening. Thank you so much. Um. And it's an iconic, a very cutting and sharp, cutting, cutting edge and sharp uh, title. Take notes, Randy, which I mean, vodka surprises me. Yes, surprise. I, I have, I have a feeling that that uh, <clears throat> that we're we're starting drinking early for some good reasons. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to to this, to more news from this. Does it actually say? Let me see. What does it say? Nintendo will also release several other Mario titles in 2020. That includes a deluxe version of 2013's Wii. 
U game, Super Mario 3D World, uh, and ma-da-na-na-na. Mario 2D games are already available on Nintendo Switch via the console Switch Online, NES, and SNES apps, which I'm sure you guys probably are, if you have a Switch and you have NES Online, or uh, Nintendo Online, you probably already know about this. Um, and vodka surprised me. <laughs> it's mac and cheese with vodka, not milk. <laughs> so, yeah, it says, approach for comment on Monday. Nintendo said, does not comment on rumor or speculation. I added the wink. Uh, Nintendo last celebrated a milestone Mario anniversary with the series 30th anniversary in 2015. Uh, and with that, with that uh, anniversary, they released a uh, 30th anniversary um, uh, encyclopedia, actually, which was if you're if you're a Mario fan, like if you play Mario Sunshine, Mario, any Mario, like, any like, you know, uh, number of Mario games in the past, that Mario encyclopedia is actually really good. Like it's very plainly laid out and you get like every single game with a synopsis and it gives you every single character levels and all kinds of stuff. And it's a thick hardcover book. It's beautiful. It's got this, it's got the, the Mario maker, like kind of bright yellow look to it, you know, so it's bright and vibrant. Every page is color. Uh, if you can get your hands on this book, like it's really good. And that's what they did for their 30th anniversary. Uh, so for the 35th anniversary, we get a whole bunch of remakes and everything. The Mario, Mario Pedia. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called, but yeah, it's, it's a good book though. Uh, it's actually one of Declan's, it was for a time. It was Declan's favorite book. Motherfucker had all the goddamn mobs memorized. Um, if Nintendo knows what, to, uh, what to do well, it's milk nostalgia. Yes. I will not fault them for that because I'm right here to drink it up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is some positive news. Hey, this is it. This is this is how we gonna end the show. Yep, with some positive, uplifting news. Yay. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, coronavirus shit still happening. Coronavirus stuff is still happening. A lot of us are, are trapped at home, not able to go out unless it's for walking the dog or going uh going to get some supplies, <laughs> Bra braving the horde to go get supplies. Um. But at least we have a lot of positive games to play, right? Right? Animal Crossing. And then that's it. <laughs> Wait, there's more, right? There's more, there's more happy, positive games, right? <laughs> Hyper Amazon Studio. I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't looked at that one yet. That one's going to come in. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll save that one for now. Because right now we want to we end this here. And just say <clears throat> thank you guys for... <sighs> Glad you got to be away from all those assholes trapped, but not not me. I'm st I'm still stuck with you guys. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Chat, thank you so much for being here for the show. For those of you guys who are new, hanging out uh, for the show for the first time, welcome. I'm glad you guys got to catch it. I really appreciate. It. I'm sorry, Frog, about the news. I'm really sorry. Uh, and yeah, bye YouTube. Chat. I'll see you guys in a minute. <laughs>